Good day, Lord Sarwick. Are you well rested? Hello, Shori. I hadn't noticed it was so late. Do you have news of Lord Halton? The girl we were waiting for should have arrived four days ago. And as it happens, for four days now I haven't been able to speak with him. Lord Halton left before dawn to take care of a matter. He's not due to return before the day's end. Very well. I'm eager for his return. I really need to speak with him. I understand. If you wish, you could pass the time with the other men in the courtyard. I saw Sir Ethan practicing there earlier. I will consider it. Thank you. One other matter, Lord Sarwick. Lady Marianne wants you to have this book. She was very clear that you should read it. Very well. I will take a look at it. And by the way, it's Sir Sarwick. I know your lord is anxious to make me lord of Riverspring, but that has not happened yet. Very well, sir. Forgive me. I will try to remember that. No need to apologize, Shori. My lady? Lord Sarwick, always a pleasure. I am no lord yet, Lady Marianne. It seems Lord Halton has asked everyone to call me that in this castle. According to the laws of the Seven Kingdoms, Riverspring is yours. You are the only legitimate heir. No other can assume the title without challenging the judgment of the great Targaryen kings. Everyone knows that. It is of no consequence if the usurper and his whore believe otherwise. Their reign will be over soon, and the signs bode well for your future. You wanted to see me, if I'm not mistaken? I did. I needed to speak to you as soon as possible. Why are we meeting in the cellar? I am sorry for the inconvenience, sir. I would often come here as a child, to be alone. I still find it to be one of the more private areas of the castle. You seem to have gone to some lengths to see me alone and without anyone else knowing. What is this about, Marianne? I am worried. Please be frank with me, Alistair. Do you think my uncle's plan will succeed? You are right to be concerned, my lady. Overthrowing the usurper and giving new life to the Targaryen dynasty are both noble aims. But for this to happen, many will lose a great deal. I am sure there are many lords who will oppose it. The houses that supported Robert's rebellion 15 years ago enjoy many privileges today. Land, power. If the Targaryens were to return to power, such privileges would be redistributed. The lords currently allied with the crown will become our fiercest rivals. And the worst of them all will be my overlords, House Lannister, the Queen's house, of course. Not to mention the sworn houses of the Starks in the north, the armies of the Riverlands and the Vale of Arryn, all supporters of the King. None of these lords would welcome a return to power for the Targaryens. The risk would be too great for them. However, there are many amongst the people who still hope to see the Targaryen dynasty reinstated. And there will always be support from the lords who fought alongside the Targaryens. They will be eager to regain the privileges they lost. Time will tell. Only R'hllor knows what our future holds. We have to believe in our cause. You're right. It is what will happen if we fail that worries me. I will admit the outcome would not be heartening. But ponder this. What else are we to do? We do this for honor and out of necessity. Now is not the time to doubt ourselves. Yes, but there are alternatives, Alistair. Those are dangerous words, Lady Marianne. Do not mistake me. I have no intention of betraying my own blood. But my uncle is so focused on it. It has become a holy war to him, his reason for living. I'm not sure he has thought about the consequences of what would happen if we failed. We could lose everything. I fear that he sometimes goes too far to achieve his goals. Some of his methods make my blood run cold. If I learned anything from Tywin Lannister, it's that sacrifices are inevitable. Especially when one's aim is to recapture the Iron Throne. I have to question the wisdom of that. What was that? Not another move, whore. Alistair! Flame and shadow! Don't do anything you may regret, soldier. Let's stay calm. Did you say Alistair? That is my name, Alistair Sarwick. It's really you. Fight the Seven. What are you talking about? Who are you? It's me, Garwin. Brother, you're hurt. That's not important right now. What are you doing with this slattern? Fucking worm of an uncle has been torturing me for months. What? 
I'm sorry, Alistair. I wanted to tell you. You knew about this? Forgive me. I didn't know how to tell you. That was what I was talking about when I spoke of acts that made my blood run cold. Hold your forked tongue, Snake. Every vile soul in this castle is an accomplice. We can't take the risk of you raising an alarm, Marianne. What? You... you wouldn't dare! We should cut your throat. But, in case you are as innocent as you say, I will stop short of that. Go and hold her. You made the right choice. The black-hearted bitch would have gotten us killed. I'm not so sure. Anyway, she should be out for a while now. In the meantime, better if no one finds her. We can hide her in the chest behind you. Good idea. Servant hells, what did I just go through? It's a miracle that I'm here. I never thought I'd see anything outside of that cell again. I wouldn't have had the slightest chance without this guard's disguise. Tell me, Garwin, what did they do to you? Halton kept me in his dungeons for so long. Where do I begin? I thought you were dead. I followed your trail at King's Landing. I saw your body. I found your medallion. Halton took that medallion when he captured me, along with all my other possessions. He had it all along. He had to make sure you found it, so you would be convinced of my death. But what about the body, Gowen? Well, I suppose it wouldn't have been hard to deceive you. He just needed my clothes and a corpse to dress them with. I was just a young boy when you left. You couldn't have known about their deception. It was probably that dog Desmond who staged it. And all the while, Halton tried to break me. Why was he doing this to you? Later, Alistair. Please, bring me something to ease my pain. Every bone in my body aches. We can discuss all that later. Fine. I'll also find something to cover your face with. Otherwise, you'll be found out soon enough in this castle. Rest here. I'll be back before long. Sir Alistair, how are you faring today? Well, maybe you could help me. I'm getting pain in my arm again. At Riverspring, Maester Harwin has various ointments to treat this kind of thing. Harwin! Did you know we've formed quite the partnership and keep up regular correspondence with each other? He is a wise, loyal, and devoted friend. He is a great man. I owe him a lot. You know, what I've always admired about him is his thirst for knowledge, his curiosity. However, I must admit, he should have treated your burns better than that. Actually... I did not wish for them to be healed. Meeting with the fire was no accident. Ah, uh, I understand. It would seem very uncharacteristic of Harwin. I would very much like to know more about the Citadel and your apprenticeship, Maester. I know almost nothing about it. Ah, the Citadel, where I spent my happiest days. Do not be mistaken. I have no complaints with my current vocation. But what memories? being young and walking in Old Town for the very first time. I myself have stopped there three times. It is quite the sight. There's nothing like it in the whole of the Seven Kingdoms. And the Citadel, such a seat of learning? This is the place that fans the flames of knowledge across the world. Each to his own, I suppose. Where you prefer to enlighten the mind through knowledge, I receive enlightenment from the Master's light. Knowledge is key, my friend. It is only through the power of the written word that we can hand down our knowledge to our descendants. You are not wrong, Maester. We use the old writings to teach our new apprentices, even at the temple. Books hold such a lure for me. But forgive me, I'm digressing. I have exactly what you need for the pain right here. Here, let me apply this ointment for you. Thank you, Maester. But I would rather apply it myself if you don't mind. As you wish. It's just a habit of mine. Most people insist that I take care of everything. Take this. That should ease the pain. Thank you very much. Good day to you. Oh, Sir Alistair, I was just thinking of you. You see, Maester Martin has graced his sweeping history of the Seven Kingdoms with several new pages. What lies! I wrote an entire chapter this week. I stand corrected. I have not been fair to your tireless quill. Please forgive me. 
So when can we hope to see your completed masterpiece? I already told you. Next year. <laughs> he says that every year. I was unaware that you were embarking on such a lofty work, Maester Martin. I decided that a record should be made of what little knowledge I possess. But he is too modest. This is already his sixth book, and he is far from finishing his work. From what point of view are you telling this history? My writings are different from what you may be used to reading. I try not to adopt any particular point of view or serve the interests of any particular house. Instead, I try to recreate the truth as best I can. Well, that is certainly a unique approach. So, Alessander, was I not right? Did little Shori keep you nice and warm last night? Certainly did. She was definitely up to the task. I think she may have actually enjoyed herself. <laughs> <laughs> of course she did. They all love it. You just have to force the issue sometimes. Aye. Anyway, it won't be long before I get that one moaning with joy again. After all, who knows if there'll be a war tomorrow. You have to take these opportunities while you can. The Maester gave me this ointment. It should relieve the pain. And take this helmet. When we leave here, you must not be recognized. Can you handle this, brother? I should be all right. I haven't been tortured in a few days while they concentrated on another prisoner. I've recovered a little. Did Marianne wake? No. She should be out for a while after the blow she took. The last I heard, you were taken to the Red Keep. What happened to you after that? It started with the letter I found on Father's desk a few months ago. He must have left it there ready to send. I read it. It was addressed to John Erin, the King's Hand. He was telling him that he belonged to Targaryen Brotherhood set on overthrowing the Crown. Father was at odds with Harlton because Harlton had arranged to put a bastard daughter of Ares II in the King's bed. What? That was the duel in Harlton's plan. His thinking was that the child from this union would be the perfect heir. Someone to bring supporters of every camp under one banner. By seizing the child and bringing it to power, he was ensuring his own place in governing the Seven Kingdoms. But why would Father reveal this to Aaron? Father was very annoyed when he found out what Harlton was planning. They had been friends for a long time, but Father was against the idea of using an innocent child to create chaos in the realm. Harlton and he quarreled fiercely. Harlton didn't want to change his plans, and so Father took steps to protect the girl. So he wrote to Lord Aaron, asking him to take the girl under his protection. When Harlton found out what Father was doing, the girl had already gone. Harlton was furious. He feared that their plan was now known to the Crown, and that meant the end of the Brotherhood. So, he had Father poisoned. What? That was Harlton? He proudly revealed this to me while I was imprisoned. He will pay for that, as R'hllor is my witness. But what about you? Why did you leave Riverspring just like that? Everyone was saying you killed Father. It was just cowardice on my part. Father was furious when he found me going through his private affairs. He told me to leave the castle and I went to King's Landing, to stay at the Sarwick Manse, where I could live normally. Rumors of me murdering Father were already everywhere when I arrived, and the City Watch was on my tail. I thought it best to avoid Sarwick Manse, and so I went straight to a... friend. Felina. Have you seen her? How is she? She is worried about you. Anyway, carry on. As Harlton was at Riverspring that night, he helped to exile me from afar. He had already poisoned Father over dinner, and knowing that Father had disowned me in front of everyone, it became clear to him that I was the ideal cat's paw. Once free of Father, he helped to spread the rumor that it was I who killed him. It worked well, and I was already a wanted man by the time I arrived. I see. But how did Harlton get hold of you? That was another mistake on my part. I knew that Harlton had to be behind all the rumors when I saw how everyone was accusing me. I knew I had enough evidence to threaten Harlton with the documents I had taken from Riverspring. So I went to Redkeep, hoping to warn the Crown. But Harlton was there, waiting for you. That's right. When I arrived at the Keep Gates, his men fell upon me. They brought me here and locked me in the dungeons. What have you found out since being here? From what he told me, 
He convinced you to join his cause after you did a job for the Queen. Yes. I was doing whatever it took to regain control of Riverspring's fate. And Halton said he could help me. If only I'd known what he was up to. Don't blame yourself, big brother. There's no one better than Halton at manipulating people. And don't forget that he was supposedly a friend to Father. You couldn't have known. He even used me to get hold of Father's documents that contained details on the Brotherhood. They were hidden in the tunnels of Riverspring, and only a Sarwick knew how to get them. At least you managed to get down there. I couldn't even find the passage that led to them. So now he has all the documents that could incriminate him. He played me well. Perhaps he fully intends to honor your agreement? From what you've just told me, there is no more agreement between us. I swear it. So we only have one option. We must make the Crown aware of his plans. The King's armies can put a stop to this insult. Perhaps. But first, we have to get out of here. Wait, Alistair. It's because of another prisoner that I was able to escape. That's who they're torturing right now. I could do nothing for him on my own. But now there are two of us. I'd like to return the favor and help him. He won't be able to hang on much longer. We have to go back to the dungeons. Halton is holding someone else captive? Yes. He's been asking him about a young woman, the King's hand, and his purpose. His fate has been worse than mine. He could well have information that might help us. You have a point. And if this woman is the one I'm thinking of, then what he knows could be used against Halton. No one knows you have escaped yet. We can make the most of that. Uh, I'm listening. We have to plan how we're getting out of here. We have to make sure we can escape unnoticed. No one can recognize you. <laughs> Don't worry. I'll leave all the pleasantries to you. There is something else we can do that might help us. What would that be? One of the servants was telling me that the castle's best swords are training in the courtyard right now. Maybe it's a chance for me to fight them and put them out of action without raising suspicion. That would remove a few men who could get in our way. We'll meet with the most difficulty in the dungeons. Yes, we'll likely come across patrols there. We'll have to strike hard and fast. You can count on me. As long as the ointment keeps working, I'll be fit to fight. The pain is almost gone. Don't tie yourself, Garwin. I will not let you die here. I have not forgotten our house motto. It's good to see you again, Alistair. It is good indeed, little brother. We must go now. Lord Sarwick, can I help you? I couldn't help noticing the sadness that clouds your sunny face. I'm not sure I understand. Something troubles you, Shuri. I can tell. It's... it's nothing, Lord Sarwick. I had a difficult night, that's all. A servant's life is not like a princess's. You have to accept that. For people like me, all you can do is grit your teeth and get on with it. Besides, I still have a lot to do, so I'd like to get back to work, if you don't mind. Lord Alistair, I knew I'd find you here. I could smell the noxious scent of your heresy as soon as you entered the courtyard. Sir Ethan, believe me, I share your joy in this reunion. I'll warn you now, your preaching will fall on deaf ears here. We don't drink from cups poisoned by primitive beliefs. Don't worry, I have not come to talk theology with someone of such narrow mind as you. Perhaps we should let our respective gods speak through our swords? You dare to challenge me? I accept. Seeing you fall will prove once and for all that your god is all show and no substance. Save your duel. I would rather test myself against your soldiers. Only the level of the student will reveal the quality of the master. Let's see what yours are made of. Such arrogance. Very well. But if you die, you only have your worthless god to blame. You lot, get in position! Lord Sarwick wants to pit himself against you. Attack him all at once and don't hold back. For Castlewood! Enough! You're going to kill them! I know when to stop, Sir Ethan. I'm not sure I believe you. These three will be laid up for days with those injuries. You told them not to hold back. I was only doing the same. If you play with fire, sometimes you get burned. In that case, would you rather play with me, my lord? Very well. Come on, knight. I'll be happy to introduce you to the art of the blade. 
No mercy, then. For Castleward! Well done. You win, Red Priest. This time, anyway. I think that demonstration will suffice. It will be different next time we meet. Gods, take me. The last time I crossed these gates, I was being thrown into the seven hells. I'm sorry to put you through this, little brother. We have to come back here. But don't worry, I'll be fine. The bloody gate is locked. We have to find Alexander. I'll wager he has the key. How do you know? I spent many weeks locked up down there. I had more than enough time to learn about my torturers. This Alexander. He would sometimes watch while the others ripped out my fingernails. We need to set him a trap. He won't be wary of you. I might have an idea. There is a servant girl, Shori. It seems Alexander and his men have raped her. She could help us, and we could help her get a measure of revenge upon her torturers. Can I be of assistance, Lord Sarvik? Well, as it happens, I've come to talk to you about Shori. Has she said something about me? Well, no. I just had some questions about her. Questions, eh? I bet you're wondering what she's like in bed, am I right? Well, I don't know about in bed, but the girl takes it well enough on the floor, eh, Roger? That's putting it mildly. I see. The girl is saying that you raped her. The bitch! You might want to take matters into your own hands, my good man. Rumors such as these can do considerable harm to someone of your stature. I just passed her in the cellar. I would hurry if I were you before news of what you did reaches Lord Halton. That little whore. Let's teach her to hold her tongue. The cellar is quite out of the way. No one will disturb us there. And after all, it's almost as comfortable as her room. Good idea. Come on, Roger. That little bitch needs to be taught a thing or two. You should come too, my lord. You don't want to miss this. What? There's no one here. Lord Sarwick. What in the hells is going on? Garwin, please do the honors. Die, scum! Traitors! I'm going to the cells. Your master has someone locked up down there who he says would interest me. Step aside, please. With all due respect, you're not understanding me. My orders are clear. The cells are too dangerous for someone of your rank. Please turn around. I don't suppose you would change your mind? Not even for gold? Whoever wants to go down there will have to step over my dead body. So be it. Guts! You heard your orders? Finish it's him! It's time to put an end to the trouble you've caused us, Crow. Now say your prayers! What the...? Moors! What in the flame are you doing here? Alistair, is that you? Tell me why I always find you in the worst of situations. What about you? Why do you always take so much time to come? Believe me, it's a long story. But we need to get away from here right now. Garwin told me that you helped him escape. Thank you for that. Garwin? Your brother? I would never have recognized him. When I let him go, I thought he would leave me to rot here. You're uglier than I remember. You must really have upset them. You know me. Always good at making friends. Right. Let's get out of here before Halton comes for a little chat with us. All right. But before we do, I want a little chat of my own with that bastard torturer. Moors, we don't have time for that.
Your pain is just beginning. I think that should do it. Are you done? This horse hunt was lucky. He was dead before I could really enjoy myself. Garwin, it's you. I didn't expect to see you again. I'm sorry. There was nothing I could do, considering the state I was in. I needed time to come up with a plan. I needed to stay hidden. When I got up there, I came across my brother. And it's because of him that I was able to come back. Two Sarwicks for the price of one. Such an incredible honor. What concerns me slightly, though, is why you are here. What are you doing in this damned castle, Alistair? Where should I begin? Do you remember Valar? I do. I still have a score to settle with your bastard brother. Well, he's been trying to snatch Riverspring for a while now, and he's close to succeeding. After several setbacks, it became clear that Halton was the last ally I had against him. But I had not counted on him being such a swine. He even had my father murdered. And without knowing it, I had helped him. That's not like you to be so naive, brother. But I swear, Halton will pay for everything he's done. Death is too good for you. Give me some time, Morse. I didn't think we had time for this, Alistair. Go! You got to have your fun with your torturer, didn't you? Let me have mine. As you wish. No, I can help you. Spare me! Nothing you can say is of any consequence to me. First you will experience pain, and then you will die. I'm not finished yet. I'm only getting started. Alistair, I really need to find my dog. And we will, as long as I get to kill the other ones. There you go, old boy. Gently does it. I don't know why you go to so much trouble for this dog. We've been together a long time, he and I. He'll help us, you'll see. I was able to help Garwin escape because of him. Well, I hope he will help us, because Harton still awaits his fate. Wait. It seems that one of these guards carries Jane's scent. What are you talking about? It's a young woman that Harton is holding. The damn fool thinks he can join in the Game of Thrones by using her. And what are you planning to do about it? You have to trust me, Alistair. There isn't time to explain. We have to follow this trail to find her right now. You. You know them? I had a little word with them earlier. They might seem dangerous, but I made sure they won't be able to lift a sword for a few days. They won't give us any problems. Have mercy, my lord. We won't say anything. What about my brother? Did you show him mercy? Go to the darkness! Good. Let's go on. Enough! Enemies are within our walls, so you will do as I say. <laughs> Enemies? Good. I can't wait to see them put you on a spit. You little bitch! Marianne, what are you doing here? You ought to have stayed quiet in that chest. Trickery will get you nowhere. You should know that I have already warned my uncle. This place will soon be crawling with guards, traitor. Bring them. I'm waiting. Jane! Moors, thank the Seven, you're alive! But what have those animals done to you? Nothing compared to what I've done to them. We've come to get you out of here. Not likely, I'm afraid. Tell me, Alistair. Does threatening women run in the family? It was your brother last time. Silence, you soulless whore! Gowan is dead! If you dare speak another word about him, it will be the last word you utter. Moors, we've got the girl. Now I want Halton. Who are you? This is Alistair Sarwick. He's an old friend and loyal to us. Alistair? The servants have spoken of you. 
You are one of this pig's guests. Moors, I don't trust your friend. So, this is the girl you've been telling me about. We don't have time for introductions. We can discuss everything once we're outside these walls. Did you hear that? Someone is coming. Harden, there you are. Alistair, what is this act of treachery? Take one step further and I'll gut you like a fish. How dare you? You poisoned my father. Then you murdered my brother in your vile dungeons. You lied and manipulated me. And now you dare accuse me of treachery. Your father was well aware of the price he would have to pay for standing in my way. You are making the same mistake as your father. Listen. My niece has played no part in this. If you let her go, I will spare your lives. You can scheme all day, Harton, but Jane will never stay with you. You are surrounded and trapped at the top of my castle. Tell me, how do you hope to survive? You know perfectly well how. If you let us leave the castle with Jane, we will spare your niece. You have my word as a knight. I cannot do that, I'm afraid. Release her immediately or pay with your lives. Uncle, please! Silence, Marianne. You brought this on yourself. Careful now. Think hard about what you're doing. Alistair, stay your hand. Did you hear that, Marianne? Your own uncle cares not whether you live or die. That's not true. If you let her go, you can both walk free from here. You have my word. He lies! I know it! Don't do it, Alistair! That he's lying, I have no doubt. But killing Marianne won't help us here. Get out of my sight before I change my mind! You made the right choice. Death over dishonor. Well, you are more stupid than I originally thought. I don't care for your values. Honor won't save you now. It looks like I have you at my mercy. Kill them, but don't harm the girl. No! Stop, all of you. No one fire. Jane, my child, don't do anything rash. Your life is too precious to me. Think about it. I'm offering you a future as Queen of Westeros. I'd advise you to try nothing. Otherwise, you risk killing the child. Morse, this is our chance. What do you mean? You remember that night with the Frey twins, when their father came storming into the bedroom? You broke your leg, if I remember well. We're too old for such foolery. Besides, Jane would never survive. Well, do you have a better idea? We'll never leave Jane. Morse, they won't hurt me. Not while I have this child within me. Jane, no. You made the right choice, my child. You two, lay down your arms immediately. It's over. Get ready, Morse. Harden! By a law, you will pay for my family's death. Stop this! <laughs> Take the girl away, and keep her under close guard. As for these dogs, bring me their heads before nightfall. <laughs> <laughs>